Hi and welcome back to our YouTube channel. In today's video we are going to play around with silicone and Detner. More specifically we are going to play around with Pletzel Gel 25 and Detner to see what the Detner does to the silicone. My name is Linda, I am the owner of Schminke Grim, a special effects makeup store in the Netherlands and I am also a special effects makeup artist. And in today's video I wanted to talk to you about the Pletzel Gel 25 and the Detner. So I had a few questions recently about Detner and Pletzel Gel 25 and should I use it with my silicone or should I not use it with my silicone? The answer depends on what you want to do with your Pletzel Gel 25. If you for instance want to make your molds with the Pletzel Gel, I would not use Detner because Detner makes it softer, it makes it more sticky and it doesn't help to create a nice looking mold which you can work with. But if you are going to use it to create prosthetics, I would say yes, you definitely want to use your Detner. But then the next question is how much Detner do you want to use with your silicone? So you can kind of freely choose the amount of Detner to put with your silicone and that is why I wanted to show you today what the result will be if you would put it with different ratios of Detner to Pletzel Gel. Um, I have a few cups in front of me and I'm just going to mix up a few batches of silicone and add different amounts of Detner to it so we have a nice testing amount so you can see what the Detner does. So I have a scale, it is a scale that can weigh up to hundreds of grams and I zeroed it out with the cup on the scale. So I have my Pletzel gel repotted into different um, bottles. These are squeeze bottles which I can use to very precisely squeeze out an amount of Pletzel gel because in my opinion I have those 10 kilogram uh, buckets of Pletzel gel. It's very difficult to weigh like 10 grams of Pletzel gel A and it's very easy with a bottle like this one. So what I'm going to do is put um, 10 grams of A in the five cups I have in front of me. Now I have 10 grams of Pletzel Gel 25 in all of these cups. I also need to add 10 grams of Pletzel Gel B to them because the mixing ratio for Pletzel is 1 to 1. So before I get loads of comments on this, you should weigh your silicone in different cups. You should just weigh 10 grams in one cup and B 10 grams in one cup and your Detner in yet another one and then put them together because then you can more securely measure out what you are doing. If I put too much of the B in one of these cups, I cannot get it out again because it is already in there with the part A. But I think that is okay. I am um, going to do this very quickly. So I'm just putting one cup with the one to one to one ratio. So I made a little mistake which I quickly corrected. I wanted to show you just what Pletzel gel is and then add the Detner into the mix. So this is just Pletzel gel A and B. I have to mix it up. But now I want to add 10 grams of the Detner to this mix. So I'm zeroing out my scale and there will be 10 grams of Detner added to this one. So with this one I want to put one part A, one part B, two parts Detner. So mainly it is the Detner is the same amount as the Pletzel Gel A and B. So I had 10 grams of each and I will add 20 grams of the Detner. So my cups are getting full. I didn't really realize that when I started out. So three is 10 grams, 10 grams, 30 grams. And finally we have the four mix. And that should have 40 grams of Detner. 
Now we have them all weighed out. I really need to mix them and get them in the cups. So I mix them in these and I will put them in other cups. And that is because I have put a little bit of mold release in those cups because the more uh, deadener you will use, the stickier the silicone gets and it will be really hard to get it out of there. Um, shall I add a little bit of silicone pigments just to show you the colors? And there are all my different mixes of Pletzel Gel with the Deadener. Now, of course, these need to cure. And the quickest one will be the one without any Deadener in it. And the slowest one will be the one with the most Deadener in it. Because the more Deadener you add, the longer you have to wait for it to cure. Um, I'm going to give it about an hour and then we will see what has happened to all of our silicones. It has been just over an hour and when we check the silicone you can see that the silicone without any deadener has set completely. We can say the same about the one with a bit deadener. This one is still kind of sticky as you can see. And the more deadener is in the mix, the stickier it still is. But I'm going to try to remove all of them from their containers so we can see what the silicone does. So I am going to powder them basically to get rid of the stickiness and hopefully I can get these last two out of the uh, jars I put them in. Um, let me get a powder brush and just spread that powder around that cup a little bit. So just before I start doing this probably the last two will not get out of that little container in one piece because it has just been an hour and it really needs a bit more time to set with all of that deadener in there but that being said we are going to start out with the silicone that doesn't have any deadener so I put a little bit of release agent in all of these cups to make it easier to get the silicone out of there I use the MAC wax or I use the I don't know which one I used. Probably I used the MAC wax. So as you can see, there is a sheet of silicone and I can stretch it, but it will return to its original form instantly. Now, when we get the one with a little bit of deadener, you can see it's already more flexible, but it immediately springs back into its original form. So this one already moves better with the skin if you would want to make a prosthetic out of it. So this one has an equal amount of deadener to the amount of silicone. So this one has two parts deadener to one part A and one part B of the Platzel Gel 25. And I can stretch this out really far and it will come back in its original form. But it will take a while. So this is softer yet and you can really easily manipulate this on the skin and stretch it a bit if you would want it to. So this is the mix I usually go for when making silicone prosthetics. Well, then we have the one part A, one part B and three parts deadener. And I don't think I will really get this out of its container very easily. I had a huge fight with this one already. It is one part A, one part B and three parts of the deadener. And as you can see, it isn't really round anymore. I can stretch it enormously and it will eventually, I think, get back in its original shape, but it will take quite a while. So as you can see, it does kind of go back, but the deadener really makes it soft and flexible and it's pretty okay being stretched and staying where you put it. So um, I don't usually use a silicone this deadened, but it's nice to see what it does so you know what to expect if you add more deadener. Well, I don't really know if I dare to try this one 
because it's even softer than the previous one. There you go. So no, as I can see now, I will not get this out of the cup, but you can see if I put my finger in there, I can really put my finger in there and it doesn't really come back all the way anymore. It's just way too deadened. These silicones have just been in these cups for about an hour. So that is plenty of time for the pretzel gel and with a little bit of deadener and even with uh, an equal amount of deadener to the complete mix of the pretzel gel but these two have not been in there long enough so this is kind of what you can expect but if you would leave them in the mold for longer they would cure a little bit more and you would probably get a bit stiffer silicone than I am showing you now. So for me personally, this is where my sweet spot is. I think it is a lovely and flexible silicone. It's easy to work with on the skin. It really moves with the skin as well, but it also gets back in its original form. Before using this one, I did create loads of prosthetics with this one, but as you can see, it's still kind of stiff and it does easily glue down on the skin but when you have loads of movement or place the prosthetic in areas where there is loads of movement it doesn't always look that good so for me it is this mix and I can imagine that in some cases maybe you would even want a mix like this one this is just for me too much Detner. And that is me showing you what Detner does to Pletzel Gel 25. So the more Detner you will add, the more flexible your silicone gets, but the more Detner you will add, the more sticky the result will be of your silicone. So this is already pretty sticky. It sticks to the board pretty well. And this I don't even dare to take out of the cup. Um, and this is just pure silicone. It is the Pletzel Gel 25, a bit of pigment and of course the deadener. If you would want to make prosthetics with these, you definitely need to use an encapsulator like Baldi's or Super Baldi's, kind of depending on what you are going to work with makeup wise. Um, I hope you found this video informative. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel in the link below to stay tuned on all our videos. The Pletzel Gel 25, the Detner and the silicone pigments are obviously available at our web store. And for now, I wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you back next time.